Hello, it's Gary Fox, and we are going to do a uh, draw a clock bezel. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about it, but first, let's talk about how I'm setting up the screen. I'm going to set it up in millimeters, and uh, there's a reason for that because it's really easier. I don't feel like fighting the, fr the fractions myself tonight, so I'm going to go with uh, the international one, even though I'm a by-god American, and probably most of you don't understand that. But anyhow, um, so we're going to set this thing up in millimeters, and uh, the rest of the stuff we don't really care about, I have turned off the grid. Okay, I have a gentleman that contacted me on my email. And uh, he has got, he is a clockmaker. And he also uh, has a, uh, has built himself an engraver that's going to use CNC, or computer numerical control. And the way that works is that it uses uh, CAD, well, he can use CAD, create a DXF file, and then there is some CAM software. That will then convert the DXF into commands that can be used by his uh, eng engraver. Part of what I don't know is how it works with uh, converting. But my guess is that it works drawing lines for everything. Just like an old pen plotter did. Which I do have experience with. So we're going to attempt to draw a bezel. Which is what he wants to do for a... Uh, he wants to create a clock face. And tonight we're going to do just the bezel part of it. And then also prepare to do it for uh, Roman numerals. Okay, so we're going to start out. We're going to draw ourselves a, a crosshair for where the center is going to be. And that may be handy. And I just screwed up. So let's undo. We're going to make this thing about 20 millimeters. Not 120 and so now we just pick a point, we draw it, and then I'm going to create a vertical line and just draw it. And we now have our center. Okay, we're going to draw a circle, and I'm guessing that a uh, clock face will be about 20 centimeters in diameter, so that's about 100 millimeters in uh, radius. So we're going to draw a circle and we're going to do it starting with that intersection there and uh, the radius we're going to set that to be 100 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters and so there's our clock face okay most clocks I've noticed and I had to actually go out and look at these uh, usually the uh, tick marks are on the outside of the numbers on the outside circle so that's the way we're going to draw this okay I just chose circle again. I chose concentric circle. And I am going to set that about 4 millimeters from the other circle. And that looks about right to me. Is it right? I don't know. <laughs> but I think it looks right. Okay, now we got to start drawing the tick marks. And the way we're going to do that is that we're going to... Uh, do a vertical line and I'm going to go to my green layer now and I'm going to set that at 120 millimeters and that will be bigger than the circle and that's fine for right now okay now we've got several things that we've got to do but the first one I want to do is I need to set border for where we're going to put the Roman numerals okay You've got 12 digits on a clock, 360 degrees. That means that each one is 30 degrees from each other. Take 360, divide by 12, you got 30. That means that each one of these can own up to 15 degrees, and plus or minus 15 before it starts overlapping into the space of the next number. So that's what we're going to set it at temporarily. And then we hopefully will use less than that. So we're going to go to Modify Menu. We're going to go to Rotate. We're going to select this line. And we're going to rotate it. 
Okay, so select a reference point and we can set it to that intersection again. And we're going to rotate it by 15 degrees. We only want one copy, but we're, so we're going to keep the original. So we have now rotated that by 15 degrees. Notice that positive number in degrees is a, a counterclockwise rotation or anti-clockwise, I think is what most of the rest of the world says. Okay, now we're going to mirror that line. So the way you mirror is that you select the uh, line that you're going to mirror. And then you select a, a point, and then you select another point where you're going to uh, create a line to mirror it by. And we're going to keep the original again. So now we have a mirror. So we now own one space there, and that's going to become our border. Okay, now what I've got to do at this point is that I've got to come up with how big I think the, that the... Uh, the thing will be. So what I'm going to do next is go to line. I'm going to go to two point line. We're still with intersection. I'm going to draw a line from there to there. Okay, now I need to offset that line. And so I can still my line function. I'm going to go here. Okay, it's only at four right now. I'm going to say we're going to try 10 millimeters. And let's see how that does. And that's not very high. Uh, I'm thinking more like 20, so we'll see how that does. That's probably pretty good. We could probably actually go 30. Let's see. Yeah, that's getting maybe too much, but we'll go ahead and stay there. Okay. Now let's zoom in just a little bit. We will draw some horizontal lines from the skinniest part. Those lines are humongous because they're still 120. But now we're going to trim it. So we are going to trim that lines. So we will go trim function. We'll trim here and here. And then we will uh, trim this line, this line. And we've got our space where we're going to draw it. We also have our uh, line that centers it up when we get ready to do that part of it. Okay, we can delete the other two outer lines now. So we'll go to delete function, select, select, and we've deleted that. Now we've got this kind of nice looking hammer looking thing. Okay, each one of those is going to contain a uh, Roman numeral. And so what we're going to do is copy that. We're going to copy the heck out of it. So we're going to go to move copy function. We're going to select all that stuff. And that's why I showed you the select functions yesterday where we're going to select it by a window, but we're going to do it wherever we just touch the uh, thing. And I'm still in window function. Well, that should have worked. Make a liar out of me. And we'll deselect the circle there. Okay, we're going to copy that. So now we choose the reference point. We're going to choose our same crosshairs there. And now we're going to uh, go free positioning. Move it over here. But we're going to do something here we are going to make 12 copies. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, we've got 12 numbers to have to set. So if we zoom all the way out, you'll see i got 12 things out there to copy. I'm going to do a Control K, uh, and those are going to be there for our future use. Okay, now let's zoom back into just our clock face at this moment. And we've got some more work to do. So I'm going to delete some of this stuff that we've got. We're going to delete that box there. Okay. Now, we have got to have tick marks for every second. 
and we're only going to do part of those right now so I'm going to do another rotate function and uh, each of those will be six degrees so we'll select this line we'll do a continue we'll go back to our crosshairs and we are going to do six degrees and we're only going to do four points four copies because we already have one and that's the uh, numbers between one digit and the next digit uh, the next digit would be the start of the next group okay now we need to do one other thing uh, we can actually trim all this right now so let's do that because that will save us from having to do all the trimming in the future uh, the more things we have trimmed before we copy the better off we are so we'll trim all of these things Okay, now on this one, and let's zoom out just a little bit. Zoom in, I mean. Uh, we want, so we pretty much have the top of this thing, and I'll use the pan function, move it around a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to want to do, I think, is have some tick marks on either side of this. My guess is that the... Uh, cam software is going to draw a series of lines and so we want a couple of lines here so that it'll be a darker little area there so we will go to uh, and you heard the word there the infamous word guess because I don't really know uh, so we're going to choose that we're going to rotate it we're going to use our rotate about the center of the thing and we're going to make that at about 0.5 for an angle. We're going to make two of those. Yes, two. Okay, now we need to mirror those. So we'll mirror those two. And we're going to mirror them about this point right here, this line. And we'll keep the originals. And I think that's going to look pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and we're going to uh, change all the layers right now so that everything's back to black. We're out of our bogus material right now. So we'll go ahead and uh, select. We use a window function. And we've selected all of that stuff. Continue action. And we'll set that to layer 0 which will be black and that's basically what it's going to look now you may want to have some more lines in between that instead of having it 0.5 uh, millimeters I'm sorry 0.5 degrees you may want to have it at 0.25 uh, that I don't know it depends on how wide the uh, how wide the engraver engraves and then how many lines you want next to each other Okay, we've now got it for one segment. We've got five seconds right there, or five minutes. So we're going to do another rotate function. And we're going to rotate. We're going to pick all of these points, all these lines. I'm going to do that rotate uh, with intersected points. We'll do the line right there through it. Okay. Or that's what we did for our select, I'm sorry. We're going to go again from the center. Okay, we have one set for one minute, so we've got 11 more minutes to do. So we're going to have <coughs> 11 minutes, and each one's going to be 30 degrees. We do OK, and we now have our clock bezel. And I'm 14 minutes into this thing, so uh, I'm out of time. So that's the end of this one. Appreciate you listening.